Well, aloha, everyone. Welcome and thank you for coming to today's live podcast, live stream. My name is Paul Fletcher, and this is The Healing Source. Uh, This week is week eight of the 10 days, the 10 Da qualities. Every week I have been sharing with my listeners these very important 10 qualities that if enacted within our lives can create extraordinary changes. The qualities themselves are certainly not extraordinary, but they are very, very important. So important that teachings must be consistently done on them so that people realize sometimes the simple way is the best way. These 10 qualities are referred to as the 10 Da, and they were received in the spiritual channels of my spiritual teacher, whose name is Dr. and Master Shah. Having trained since the age of five, to be an advanced spiritual master and servant to humanity, Dr. Master Shah has dedicated his life to helping humanity. He's one of the most renowned healers on the planet. But along with that comes the responsibility to assist all of us to be a better version of ourselves. And what tends to get in the way is this thing called life. However, How we bring ourselves to life can make a big difference. We all have choices of how to uh, think, how to speak, how to act. Those choices do not always have to be reaction-driven, response-driven, powered um, by emotions that are very often tied to uh, ego-based protection. If we can uh, enhance and train ourselves to be in life, be with life in harmony by applying these 10 qualities more and more, little by little, each and every day, then we have the greatest opportunity to literally make our lives significantly better does not matter what part of your life might be out of balance. When you uh, understand and apply these 10 qualities to any aspect of your life, especially and including those imbalanced aspects, you could be quite surprised at the results. Now, today is week eight of these 10 weeks of the 10 Da. For those that are new, Da is a Mandarin Chinese word. It means greatest. So these 10 qualities are the greatest love, greatest forgiveness, the greatest compassion, the greatest light, the greatest humility, the greatest harmony, the greatest flourishing, number seven, and this week, the greatest gratitude, number eight. So love, peace, excuse me, uh, love, forgiveness, compassion, and light. Those are all amazing qualities. And if you missed those, make sure you go back and watch the previous podcasts or the previous episodes on my various social media channels. It can assist you greatly uh, with having a deeper understanding of those qualities. Um, This week is all about the greatest gratitude. And prior to coming live today, I went into a meditative state and I connected And I ask, could you please give me, uh, download a message of how best to present this subject so that the most people who listen can get the most value out of it. So I will be sharing with you uh, a lot of what I received today along those lines. So again, for anyone that's new, I invite you to Sign up for the podcast, subscribe wherever you're listening to it. If you're with me live today on uh, YouTube or Facebook or the other channels that I'm streaming live to, welcome. Thank you for coming. I see Aichia said hello. Happy to, to acknowledge all of you if you let me know you're here. So what is gratitude? Well, there's the obvious and there's the not so obvious. Virtually everybody 
regardless of your language, understand what gratitude is. What is the nature of gratitude? It is an acknowledgement and appreciation for something. So understanding gratitude is and has never been the problem. The difficulty is when, how, and how much we apply it. The vast majority of us apply gratitude and appreciation when we are on the receiving end of something that is positive, something that is beneficial and uplifting, something that makes us happy. And then we show gratitude. So that could be food when you're hungry. That could be little help on a paying something when you need a little help. That could be fixing a flat tire when you don't know how to and some stranger stops and helps you. Okay. So we all are familiar with those opportunities of reflecting and showing gratitude. <clears throat> there is a much deeper reason why this is one of the 10 qualities as listed. It's important to also recognize these 10 qualities were not invented by this person, doctor, and master Shah. No. Love, light, forgiveness, compassion, humility, harmony, flourishing, gratitude, service. All of this is available to everybody with, with equal amounts. We all have equal amounts of this available to us. It is the application and integration of these qualities, in this case, gratitude, that can change your world. So let's look at how. In this thing we call life, there is a constancy of challenges. Raise your hand if you are the poster child of someone who deals with challenges on a constant basis, right? They, they flip open the, the book dictionary definition of challenges and they might see your picture there. If that's you, raise your hand. Okay, so we all have challenges. You're not alone. But a lot of us think that our challenges are greater than others. <clears throat> so we want to write a book on our challenges so we can lament those challenges, so we can exacerbate those challenges or uh, try to help other people to understand just how difficult our life has been. Da Chenbe, which was quality number six, spoke of, give me just a moment. I'm going to send a text response to a person that is important. I don't want to miss their call, but they just called me. Okay. Da Chen Bei, the greatest humility. What does that have to do with greatest gratitude? Well, when we apply the greatest humility, we are in essence taking nothing personally. We are removing from ego, me, 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 uh, and when somebody says or does something, we recognize that that person has some imbalances and they're expressing themselves in a very unpleasant way in most cases. And instead of taking it personally and reacting, we don't. In gratitude, <clears throat> we very often do not have gratitude because we have too much ego. When we have too much ego, what happens is life brings us challenges. Those challenges are not there to make us miserable, guys. It's not. Challenges are there to assist our growth, to become pure beings of love and light. You personally have surpassed many challenges. Because of your winning and surpassing those challenges, you now have a set of wisdom that other people do not have. And because of your benevolent nature, you share that wisdom with others that have similar challenges because you've overcome it, right? But when you were in it, it wasn't so much fun, was it? So <clears throat> challenges are always there to assist us. The ones that you've risen above, you've learned from, and that is the case every time. But when we get stuck in our ego and we get stuck in self-defense mechanisms and we get stuck in fears and worries and all those things, that are future or past tense based because almost always the fears, the worries, the concerns 
are drumming up past memories or bringing up future fears, worries, concerns, all of which keep us out of the present moment. And that's what I want you to be conscious of. In that present moment of life and those challenges, no matter what is coming at you, it's easy to be grateful for the stuff that's easy to be grateful for. Not so easy to be grateful for life, especially when it shows up in some unpleasant ways sometimes. The truly conscious person, the person that wants to make a difference in their life and in other people's life, the person that is truly on the path of enlightenment or milder, the person that just wants to be happier and healthier, they see each potential uh, life event or experience from the eyes of a person that is not filled with ego. They see it from the eyes of a person that has a desire to operate in love, forgive the person that might be giving them a life challenge, be compassionate for that person that's giving them a life challenge, be grateful, today's subject matter, be grateful for that life challenge, because if they are truly awake and aware, <clears throat> they can recognize that the purpose of that challenge is not to create suffering. It is to create growth, or a better way of saying it, it is to create more light in your life. The greatest light, Da Guang Mi, number four. When we react, respond, be with life, with the challenges that come to us, and pause, pause, just stop. I'm experiencing this challenge. I'm not so sure I'm enjoying it. I really want to scream at the top of my lungs. I want to write a book about how hard my challenge is. I want to scream and cry and to everybody who will listen to me about my difficulties, right? We want to complain. That was part of the message I received. People default into complaining. Me included. Even just yesterday, I was catching myself complaining. And I caught myself. You know what I did? I kept on complaining. <laughs> Why? I asked myself that today. Because I looked back. I said, okay. Heaven's telling me now that complaining is a lack of gratitude. So, yeah. I get that. And I was complaining yesterday about something trivial for the most part. <clears throat> and... um and I caught myself. And I kept complaining. Mm. And I witnessed myself kept complaining. I did it anyway. Basically created more negative messages and information for myself. Can you relate to that? Right? Are you awake and aware enough where you complain and you stop and you catch yourself, but you keep going? So I asked myself today, why? Why do I do that? Not all the time, obviously, but why? And my answer in my channels was, because you have an attachment to the complaining. Wow. Wow. And then it went on to say that's your ego. Your ego wants to complain. Your ego wants for others to hear. Your ego wants to be right. So now we're back to the Da Chen Bei, aren't we? How can we have gratitude when life brings us challenges and we prefer to complain? We default to complaining. It's always easy to be grateful when things are going well. It's not so easy to stay in that space when challenges come. And yet, what is it that we are being taught by the highest wisdom from all ages, all time? These same 10 qualities have been taught by all the great beings of love and light for, you know, ever. Master Shah is just bringing it to us in a more modern terminology of these 10 qualities. <clears throat> if we address that uh, experience that comes up with love and forgive the person that might have said something unpleasant that brought about that challenge, uh, if we can have compassion, no ego, no humility, uh, excuse me, grow humility, have compassion for what suffering that um, those peoples, those, those, you know, the lawyers, the doctors, the da, 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 what suffering must they have went through to be so miserable to bring that into my vibration? Wow. Let's have compassion for them. Now I'm shifting my energy and I'm not allowing something outside of me to impact me. 
I'm so grateful that I have these skill sets that I can apply love and forgiveness and compassion. I'm grateful to my teacher that has brought me these wisdoms. I'm grateful for this moment in time that allows me to disallow this, what previously might be termed a negative message and information to come to me and see it. Well, uh, let's say you catch yourself like me in a complaining mode, right? And you don't want to stop complaining like myself. What can we do? We can recognize it's ego. So I have to go back and, and work on that. I haven't done the job on that yet, right? But I'm sharing this with you because we're all human. We're all going through the same growth cycles. <clears throat> so when we catch ourselves complaining, which I would venture to say the vast majority of us are professional complainers. Speaking for myself, I'm pretty good at it. When we catch ourselves complaining, we really must question what's the purpose behind it? Typically, it's for validation. We want someone to hear that we're right and that's wrong. But ultimately, that wrong thing that's outside of us is trying to serve us. The purpose of every soul is to serve. That's the wisdom, right? Everything has a soul. So an experience has a soul. The, the individual or that, uh, that experience that's bringing challenges in your life has a soul. What's the purpose of that soul? To serve. Yeah, but it's negative. I'm not enjoying this negativity. How is negativity serving me, you say? It's giving you the opportunity to practice these 10 qualities so you can be more love and more light. When we bring ourselves into each moment and practice not reacting, practice love, forgiveness, compassion, we can catch ourselves the majority of the time and we can be grateful for whatever that experience is. We are in a present, in a time where the word manifestation is relatively commonplace, especially for anybody that's spiritually awake. But manifestation has dependencies and it is dependent upon our predominant vibration. Are we predominantly vibrating complaining? Are we predominantly vibrating negativity? Are we predominantly vibrating gratitude? If you want to bring forth what it is you're thinking about, what it is you truly want and desire, health, uh, uh, financial, relationship, doesn't matter. If you want to bring that about, which all of us do, why do we complain? Because that derails the manifestation. Why do we allow ego to win? That derails the manifestation. I've used this verbiage before, but it's still applicable. We want to be stewards of every moment, and that includes gratitude. Because the moment we can see it for what it is, when we can have gratitude for that experience, as pleasant or unpleasant as it may be, we are the steward of that moment. We are not allowing fear or worry or concern from the future derail something positive we've been working on. We're not allowing concerns from the past that this current moment might trigger memories from the past because current moments do trigger memories from the past, right? That's not uncommon. So we have to be the steward of this moment, not allow that memory from the past to override the moment and bring us into a future-based fear or doubt because that's what a lot of us, it's what happens to a lot of us. Gratitude allows us to be present to it, process through it as quickly as possible. For those that have toolkits, such as Tao calligraphies and healing transmissions, Tao song, lots of the things that are available that our teacher has brought us, then practice with those immediately because it will remove from your field uh, past um, memories, negative memories, and future fears and worries and doubts and concerns. Utilize those tools when you are present. And this will allow you to gratefully process through whatever you're going through with the least amount of negativity associated with it. That equates to the greatest possibility of getting what you want in your future. Gratitude is the gas pedal of a positive, successful life. You should put that on a t-shirt because it's true. When you, uh, as they say, have an attitude of gratitude on a consistent basis, there is very little that you cannot achieve because manifestation 
is predominantly 51% of your thought. So by being in the state of gratitude, you are forcing heaven's creation to where your predominant thoughts are. So this is what I wanted to share with you about this subject. So now let's work with gratitude. <clears throat> and I'm going to share a screen. Uh, Dr. and Master Shaw. Let me see, where did that image go? Oh, I had to restart my computer, which is why I was a moment late. So now I have to uh, find that image again. It'll just take me a moment here. But I have Dagon Un, the greatest gratitude source calligraphy. And this greatest gratitude source calligraphy is one tool that we can and should use to release whatever gets in our way of blocking our gratitude. I know all of you can see it now. And so this particular trick is relatively easy to trace and follow. Now, how do we trace? Again, for anyone listening on podcasts, obviously you cannot see this image, so uh, I will be tracing on your behalf. For the rest that can be present, touch all five fingers together and let us connect. Repeat after me. Dear the, the frequency, vibration, healing, transformation of gratitude and gratitude blockages, Within this Dagon on source calligraphy, I'm so grateful. Could you please, as I trace, could you please transfer your healing, balancing vibrations of gratitude into my vibration, helping me to release the negative memories of the past and the fears, worries, doubts of the future so that when life brings me challenges, I consistently address them with gratitude and the other qualities. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Let us chant and trace now. And Daganan is the Mandarin Chinese for the greatest gratitude. Daganan. 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 Greatest gratitude, greatest gratitude, <clears throat> greatest gratitude, greatest gratitude. Dagon Dagan greatest gratitude, greatest gratitude, greatest gratitude, greatest gratitude. Greatest gratitude, greatest gratitude, greatest gratitude, greatest gratitude. Dagan. Dahagan, Dahagan, Dahagan. Do the soul of greatest gratitude, source calligraphy. I'm so grateful that I can simply trace you and you can help me wash away these negative messages on my vibration that might cause me to default to complaining, might cause me to default to fear or worry, or past memories. Thank you for blessing me to release these old patterns, old ways of reacting and responding from my vibration. Please bless me to have more grateful, more gratitude in all my thoughts, 
all of my words, all of my actions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Even saying thank you three times, a teacher, doctor, and master Shah says that often. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue to trace. And he says, the first thank you is to the source. That's acknowledging we did not create ourselves. The second thank you is to all the beings of love and light, like those that serve us when we trace the calligraphy. This calligraphy acts as a portal through which higher frequencies and vibration, beings of love and light, are able to serve us. So we say thank you to them. And the third thank you is to our own soul journey. So let us wrap up tracing this calligraphy coming to the end. All those that are listening on podcasts, I traced for you. And I want to invite you now to become, uh, to come familiar with my website, wellspringoflight.com. I, every day, Monday through Friday, apply these technologies. We trace calligraphies. Uh, last week was on the wood element. Every day, one day was the liver. The next day was the gallbladder. The next day was the tendons. Uh, and the next day was for the eyes. And the last day uh, was for um, the emotion of anger. That's the wood element. This week is the fire element. So every day, Monday through Friday, for a half hour, dedicated healing for your health, your wellness, your emotions and emotional imbalance, whatever it might be. And then for anyone that's a part of my membership, I literally do healing every day for you uh, because with your membership, you get a choice of one, two, or three blessings where every day I give time to heal your specific requests. So come to my website, wellspringoflight.com, learn more. I do offer a free five-day experience. So you can join that five-day experience and try it. You have nothing to lose. And if you know anybody who can benefit from that, then make sure and you share that wisdom with them as well. I want to say thank you, my gratitude to all of you for coming today. And be sure and share this if it's on one of these social media channels, uh, videos, share it to various groups and to other people who can benefit. I love you all. I will be back here next week when we go into the ninth of these 10 dot qualities called Da Fu, which means the greatest service. Okay. So until then, Have an awesome day, everybody. Bye-bye.